वेलकम टू आई एनांस एडवोकेट आई एनांस एडवोकेट इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर लॉयर्स हैविंग लेस देन फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ प्रैक्टिस टुडे वी हैव विद अस एडवोकेट अनीश दिनेश उचिल ही इज प्रैक्टिसिंग लॉ सिंस द ईयर 2020 एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट प्रैक्टिसिंग एडवोकेट हिज मेजर प्रैक्टिस एरियाज आर पब्लिक ट्रस्ट ऑफिसेस अक्रॉस एम एम आर थाने एंड पालघर डिस्ट्रिक्ट he also practices in criminal civil and uh, family laws and cooperative society laws he is a retainer at pentagon prime premises private limited a real estate firm kids love which is a kids fashion wear store he also is a legal advisor to junet cooperative housing society he is also an active blog writer on various legal topics so today advocate anish uchil is going to speak on registration of public trust and its legal compliances so without wasting further time i would request advocate anish to commence with his lecture thank you greetings everyone today i am here to express and explain to you the procedures relating to the registration of a public trust under the maharashtra public trust act as well as the compliances which have to be done post and pre registration of the trust so before we commence the topic since you may be a law student you may be a law graduate you may be a practicing advocate for an advocate it is a normal course of action but for a law student or who has just graduated law and is looking for work in this field of registering registering a trust i would like to get into the technical specifications for that we need to refer to a bear act which looks somewhat like this this bear act consists of all the sections all the rules all the regulations and all the forms as published in the government notification or gr when a act is brought into effect so before we commence i would like to explain to you there are certain sections which need to be given a thorough reading section 1 as every law student has learnt in his career is related to the short title extent and the date of enactment but whereas section 2 provides the definition clause a definition clause is very important for a lawyer or an advocate because it helps in interpreting the words which are in the statute so in the public trust act unlike any other act section 2 has the definitions of all the words that are used in the act under section 2 there are multiple subsections so first we will have a view at subsection 13 of section 2 of the maharashtra public trust act i do not want you to confuse this act with the indian public trust act the indian public trust act has reference in this act however for the state of maharashtra we refer maharashtra public trust act whereas outside maharashtra when you register a trust you may refer to the indian public trust act the definition clause itself states that in case any word of which the definition is not given under this act the literal definition of the indian public trust act may be taken to construe as it is meaning for a word in this act both acts are different the indian public trust act is a central legislation the maharashtra public trust act is a state legislation but however we today are going to learn about the maharashtra public trust act so what is the maharashtra public trust act and why do we use it is a common question that everyone may have so the maharashtra public trust act was brought into effect in the year 1950 okay the act is very much clear it's an act which was brought into effect to regulate the public trusts which were already registered which were already in existence rather than registered already in existence but there was no act in specific to control or monitor the public trust activities so as i am using the word public trust 
Definition clause subsection 13 of section 2 of the Maharashtra Public Trust Act defines the word public trust. So what is a public trust? A public trust means a trust for public, religious and charitable purpose and includes a temple, mutt, vakf, church, agyari and any other place of public or religious worship and shall also in include a society formed under the Registration of Societies Act 1860. So this is what a public trust is. It's quite simple to understand what it is. I will not get into the explanation of it as the words are quite clear. Now moving on, as the words temple, mutt, work have been used in section, subsection 13, we understand the word temple under subsection 17 of the act, under section 2. This entire topic is under section 2. When I will be moving on to the next section, I will be informing you about that. At the moment, we are in section 2. In section 2, subsection 17, the word temple has been defined as a place of public worship which is dedicated to or used for the benefit of or is used as a right by the Hindu community or any other source, section of the community. That is the literal definition which is given. So the term temple includes any temple, Buddha Vihar, Gurudwara, Jain Mandir, etc. So the temple, the word Hindu, uh, Hindu community. So the word Hindu may be used as per the Hindu personal laws as well, which includes Sikhs, Jains, Hindus, Buddhists. Those, the place of worship of all those sub communities are considered as a temple. Now the word Vakf. What does the word Vakf mean? Not many of us know the meaning of the word Vakf. We have just heard it on news articles, we have heard it on political debates, but we don't understand what the word Vakf means. So subsection 19 of section 2 defines the word Vakf. So subsection 19, what does it state? The word Vakf as a perm, the section defines Vakf as a permanent dedication of movable or immovable property. Movable means cash, immovable means property. By a person professing Islam. Okay, so Vakf is applicable only to those who profess Islam. That is a point of general knowledge. Islam and also includes a waqf by a user and grants including mashrat ul khidmat for any professing Islam for any purpose recognized by the Muslim law as devoutly religious or charitable and a waqf alal aulad to the extent to which the property is dedicated for any purpose so recognized. However, the word Vakf in this act, which is the Maharashtra Public Trust Act, does not include the Vakf as described under Section 3 of the Musliman Vakf Validating Act 1913. So there are two terms which are let's say Islamic or Arabic in this subsection. So the two terms which are Islamic or Arabic are Mashrat ul Khidmat and the other one is Waqf alal Aulad. So what is Mashrat ul Khidmat? Since we are in India, we are not quite familiar with the Arabic terms. So Mashrat ul khidmat means a public waqf where the creator of the works waqf devotes the property of for the general benefit of the muslim community and means a grant which is stipulated for rendering services and what is waqf alal aulad 
So the second term means in the absence of a child for a person professing Islam, in the absence of a child, the entire income of the waqf be spent for education, welfare, development and such other purposes which are recognized by the Muslim law which is for the public at large rather the society at large now as in the last sentence of the definition clause defining a waqf in the act they stated it does not include the waqf as defined under Musliman waqf validating act 1913 so what is the term waqf as defined in the said act and why is it not a part of this act so in order to, uh, to explain that I have taken out the extract from the act the Musliman waqf validating act 1913 in its, in its section 2 defines the waqf as a permanent dedication of any property by any person professing Musliman faith, which is an Islamic faith, for any purpose recognized by the Musliman law, which is the Mohammedan law, as devoutly religious or charitable. So, this is the definition of the word waqf given in the act. So, now you may be asking that why is this not a part of the Public Trust Act as the motives are the same. So, now we come to section 3 of the Musliman work validating act 1913 what does section 3 state section 3 has quite clearly stated that the powers of a Musliman to create certain work which reads to mean that it shall be lawful for any Musliman to create a work for the purpose of maintenance support either wholly or partly of his own family children or descendants so since the waqf created under the musliman waqf validating act to 1913 is not for the betterment of the society the maharashtra public trust act will not be applicable to a waqf created under that act the main purpose of the maharashtra public trust act is to help the society prosper so that a group of people can form a trust a waqf a temple, a mart, and help the society either religiously, charitably, medically. We have multiple trusts, we have multiple hospitals which are run under a trust. Like in Greater Mumbai, we have Wadia Hospital which is run under a trust. It has multiple streams like maternity, post maternity, pre maternity. These are trust hospitals. Even Hinduja Hospital in Mahim is a trust run hospital. Saifi Hospital in Grant Road is a trust run hospital. And all these hospitals are created under the Maharashtra Public Trusts Act. They will have a registration number. They have to follow the statutory compliances of the said act. They cannot do anything over and above this act. The main reason why this act came into play was to regulate the functioning and monitor the functioning, the expenses, the expenditure as well as the, to have a control over the property of the trust so that no trustee can use that property for his own personal gain. That is the main reason why this act came into play. So now, we move on to the Next word which was, which was used in the definition of a public trust which was a mutt. So now what does a mutt mean under this act? The mutt has been defined under sub subsection 9 of section 2. It means any institution which is used for the promotion of Hindu religion which is presided over or headed by a person whose duty is to engage himself in imparting religious instructions or render spiritual services to his disciples. It also includes an institution in which the head exercises or claims to exercise headship over his disciples and the place or places of religious worship or institutions. 
that is what a mutt means it has been defined all the technical terms have been defined under the sec but in case in future if some words are not defined under the maharashtra public trust act the word the meaning which is given to the word under the indian public trust act can be taken to be in the words included in this act so now i will be explaining to you the process for registration of a public trust act that became the technical part the technical part is quite simple for the maharashtra public trust act i need not explain it to you as well but just as a resource material i bought it in front of you so now i would like to explain to you the practical part of the registration of a public trust what goes into registration of a public trust since you are really legal professionals legal law students or you may have just started your practice in my experience this is the best and the most easiest stream of law to practice in why do i say that for instance you are approached by a client and this act is used even by corporates under corporate social responsibility they create a trust and the csr fund is transferred to the trust and the trust does good and hence their corporate social responsibility is fulfilled we have blood donation drives those two are done by the trust as a part of their objectives of the trust so now registering a trust under the maharashtra public trust act you have a client who comes to you who says sir i want to get a trust registered can you help me with that not many people know about this act hence i chose this topic today to enlighten the you as a viewer that what is the stream of practice other than criminal civil and family laws these are the three very old laws which are still prevalent and a majority of advocates are practicing those laws but not many are practicing or paying attention to these laws it's quite simple in order to get the trust registered you need to purchase a bare act or even if you don't purchase a bare act kiska kya jata hai you visit the public trust registration office for greater mumbai region it's at worli for thane it's a uh, across thane court the district court at thane in palghar it's right across palghar railway station you visit that office you take a copy of all the forms which are required the main forms which are required are schedule 2 and schedule 3 schedule 2 is the first form which will be required by you why do i say that because at the, before registering any public trust first thing you do is you start with the trust deed sub section 7a of section 2 defines the instrument of trust a trust deed is a instrument of trust so what does it state it states that any instrument which is made to create the trust by its trustees which include any scheme of the competent authority memorandum of association and rules and regulations under the societies registration act 1860 is a instrument of the trust in short any trust deed any memorandum of association rules and regulations are all types of instruments of the trust so you need to start with an instrument of the trust how do you go about it will be a question that most of you may have so if you may have drafted a leave and license agreement which is the most common source of agreement you start with a heading say leave and license agreement substitute that and put in the words trust deed this deed has been made on so and so date at so and so place then you have a managing trustee who is like the president he is the main person who will be in charge of the entire trust so you had his name his address his age and then you would add him as a managing trustee and later on you add the same managing trustee even as a trustee because he is also a trustee 
you add his name, address and everything. And below that you keep on adding the other trustees, the same. As in a leave and license agreement, you add the name of a party, the age, the address, the same things. What documents do you need to ask a client, you say? You need to ask the client for his PAN card, his Aadhaar card, a photograph, passport size photograph of course. White background is most preferable. And the light bill for the address where the trust is to be registered. I'll come to that later. We will be requiring all those documents. The Aadhaar card is required for the address proof. So once you have added all the trustee details, then you have to identify the trust name. So then you say this deed has been made to register the trust which shall be known henceforth as so and so trust or foundation. That is done. Then you have to give the address. So for the address, we need the light bill. Then you come to the aims and objectives of the trust. What is the tenure of the trustees? So now, we as advocates are quite cunning. What do we do? We add the term of say five years, three years for the tenure of the trustees, which gives us income generation. But some clients are even cunning. They ask us, keep us for life. There is a provision wherein you can keep the clients as trustees for life. So what? For this scenario, I'll just say that we keep them for three years. Three years, you add the term for the trustees, their roles, their liabilities, their what is their functioning, how the trust will function, and all those clauses. The entire thing has been made in this act. It's quite clear. Now, once you have done that, in this bear act, you will find schedule 2. Okay. So what is a schedule 2? So a schedule 2 is as per the act, a form which has to be submitted along with the trust deed. So it is to the deputy or assistant charity commissioner in the matter of public trust so and so, I the managing trustee apply under section 18 for registration of the trust. I am submitting the necessary particulars. You need to include the name of the public trust, the address of the public trust and the care of, meaning the owner's name of the address, the correspondence address or the registered trust address, owner's address there. Then you need to fill in the name of the trustees, which is the name which includes and should include or else you will face an objection. This is very important. The name, the address, the PAN number, the Aadhaar number, a mobile number, email ID. These are the six very important points for any public trust under Schedule 2 to be registered without any objection. Some people don't have an email ID. Give their kids email ID or else you create an email ID for them and you hand over the password to them. But an email ID is must or else you will be stuck in office objections. Once you have filled out the trustee details, then you need to include the mode of succession. The schedule 2 will give you all this, the mode of succession, which you will take from the trustee, which in this current scenario is three years. Then what are the objects of the trust? The common objects for a trust are educational, social, charitable, religious. Then you need to include the source of income of the trust. You do not have a current source of income, but what is your expected source of income? The most common source of income which is mentioned in a trust deed is donations, state government and central government grants. These are the three most common sources of income. Then documents creating the trust. We have a trust deed. So we mentioned that it's the trust deed. Then any other document which will be nil. Particular of any scheme is nil. Movable property. So at the time of creating any trust, the trust needs to have, in my case, I use a minimum of 1000 rupees as the movable property of the trust, which is like an opening balance you have 1000 rupees in your trust. That is my 
way of forming a trust. Then details of immovable property. You have to list the details of immovable property. You have to attach those documents of the immovable property which belongs to the trust. And then we move on to estimated value of each movable property. Then the gross average annual income. Then amount of annual expenditure which is expected on remuneration of trustees and manager, on establishment and staff, on religious objects, on charitable objects, on miscellaneous objects or items. Then comes encumbrances if any which will be nil. Particulars of title deal pertaining to trust property that you have to add like the registration number, the property details and remarks if any. In remarks you can add that the accounting year for the trust will be from uh, 1st April to 31st March of each year. And in case of communication to the trustee or manager in connection with the trust may be sent to the following address which is the registered address of the trust. You have to write the care of that is the owner's name which appears on the light bill and the address. This becomes your schedule 2. Now unlike any other application which we submit before the court we need to verify the same which makes us obligated to all the information that we have provided to be true and correct. So we add a verification clause. So now verification clause can be affirmed at the judicial clerk who is already present at the register at the public trust registration office or else if your client is preoccupied or does not have the time to spare to visit the office you can get it notarized but always get it registered notarized a plain before me notary will not suffice registered notary is must now after you have done that you have got your trust deed drafted you have got your schedule 2 so now the other compliances which is a consent letter. A consent letter as the name suggests is a consent by all the trustees in the trust deed are consenting to act as the trustees of the said trust. That is a consent letter. Then we move on to a no objection certificate. A no objection certificate is given by the owner of the premise whose address we are going to use as the registered address of the trust to the charity commissioner. He says that I have no objection for getting this address registered as the trust's registered address and for any communication to this address. That is a no objection letter. Then there is a application which can be added which normally we add but there is no harm in not adding it as well which is an exemption from newspaper publication which is never granted you will waste your 5 rupees court piece time. This application is of no use. Because exemption from public notice will not be granted. Unless there are any special circumstances. This is another document. Then you have an authority letter. Why do we give an authority letter? Is because the managing trustee cannot collect the registered trust deed and the certificate from the charity commissioner's office. So he, why did this authority letter authorizes a specific individual or any other trustee or any other person to collect the registered trust deed and the certificate of registration of the trust from the office of the charity commissioner. At times some offices of the public trust registra registrar do not hand over the registered trust deed or even the trust registration certificate to the advocates as well they do not hand it. So in that case it is always preferable to get an authority letter in that case. And last, I ought to have informed you at the beginning of this session but now I am informing you that once you start your practice in the public trust registration offices it is mandatory to visit their official websites and check for any new circulars. The reason for that is in the year 2018 there was a circular which was passed 
circular number was 470 of 2018 and 473 of 2018 which was the data to be filed by the trustees which is the details for user id and password for trust data entry it is a tabular format which needs to include the trust name the trust registered address and the entire details of all the trustees so serial number one for instance i Anish Dinesh Uchil, age, say 30, address, Mumbai, email ID, so and so, PAN number, so and so, mobile number, so and so, Aadhaar number, so and so. This form is the only form which will require your photo apart from the trust deed. So hence, we take photographs from the client. So this has to be filled up with everyone. You have to add even your occupation and your designation. So if I am the managing trustee in this form, as per the circular, I will have to add my designation as managing trustee and occupation advocate. So this is what needs to be done for registering a public trust act. So now the court fees. The trust deed will have to be on a 100 rupees stamp paper or a 500 rupees stamp paper depending upon your interest or else you can even add a thousand rupees stamp paper I have nothing to do with that but minimum is 100 rupees stamp paper non-judicial stamp paper only then schedule 2 needs 100 rupee court fee labels which can be 20 rupees 5 court fee labels which you affix or 10 rupees 10 5 rupees 20 you need to affix the court fee labels now consent letter you can add a 5 rupee court fee label to be on a safer side so that no office objection comes out. Then you have your no objection letter. For that you can add a 5 rupee court fee. Over and about less than 200 rupees court fee label will be utilized for this work. And apart from that court fee label you will have a 100 rupees stamp paper. So 300 rupees you are spending on stamps. At the time of submission, you need to provide the original non-notarized copy of the trust deed. It should be signed by every trustee on each page and across their name, affix their photo. The document needs to be non-notarized because a notarized document cannot be registered. Hence, we do not notarize the trust deed. Once we have made the trust deed, we keep it aside, we do not take it to the notary. We only take the schedule three, uh, sorry, schedule two to the notary. We get the schedule two notarized. The trust deed needs to be non-notarized. We attach it along with all the supporting documents, all the applications that we had made, and then we submit it. So post submission, post submission, even for before submission, we have to scan the copies. This is a bit new hence I forgot to mention it. We have to scan it, we have to create a user ID password on the official website of the charity commissioner. We have to upload those documents, fill in the schedule 3, schedule 2. We have to fill in all the, doc all the details as we have mentioned in our schedule 2 and then we upload it and then we file it physically. Then we get a number, then we go after say 15 days, we check for any office objections. If there are no office objections, it's a win-win situation for you. Your work will be get, will be completed within the next two months. Guaranteed. On the 1st of January, you filed an application. After e-filing, fixing all the court fees, all the statutory compliances have been done. You visited on the 15th of January, seeking a clarification whether there are any office objections. They say, no, there are no office objections. You take a date for newspaper publication. Say we take a date of 30th Jan. On 30th Jan, we receive a publication notice. We take that publication notice to our newspaper publisher. If you do not have one, what to do? It's quite simple. Visit the charity commissioner office, go at the desk and ask them, do you have any publisher's details? They will have two, three cards with them. Take a snap of those cards, contact them, ask them for the fees, your work is done. Visit their office, hand over the notice to them. They will get it published in the newspaper. They will give you three copies of the newspaper for free. 
publication will cost you less than 1000 rupees. You get your three copies, as soon as it is published, the next day you go and you give it to the registrar stating that I have published, he will give you a date after 30 days. The registrar's clerk, the clerk, bench clerk will give you a date after 30 days for your trust. After 30 days, your matter will be listed before the assistant or deputy charity commissioner. You appear before the deputy or assistant charity commissioner. He will ask you a few questions in regards to the objects of the trust, who are the trustees, where is the trust property located, where is the address. For the objects and the jurisdiction, once you answer those questions, you will be given a date for collection of your registered deed and your certificate. Hence, your trust is registered. Now comes the statutory compliances post a trust is registered. Once you have registered your trust, your client may think that ho gaya abhi kama abhi sir ko balance paisa kyu dena hai? Because no client will pay you the entire amount that you quote in advance. They will pay you 50% in advance to start your work and they will say, ho jayega tabhi hum de denge na sir aapko kyu tension le rahe ho, hum kithar bhaage ja rahe? So they will not pay you for instance. So then here comes the very important clause, the mode of succession and the tenure of the trustees. We added three years. What does that mean? Every three years they have to apply for change in the trusteeship before the office of the public trust registrar. Under schedule three, section 22 of the act states that section 22 subsection 1 in case of any change you have to inform the, the office but now after every three years they have to approach you again since you have done your their work in within three months they will come to you only they will visit your office they will say are sir aisa hai waisa hai aapne teen saal rakha abhi change report file karne kal denge sir pahle ka balance clear kar do They will clear your balance because they are stuck. Aage khai, piche kua. Kya kare? To, payment a gaya, thik hai. Abhi change report ka advance de do. Abhi aap se hume full payment kunga. Change report ke liye aap schedule 3 refer kar lo. Schedule 3 is quite simple. In the office of the assistant or deputy, deputy or assistant charity commissioner Mumbai, in the matter of so and so trust, Registration number so and so, address so and so, niche table, table mein aayega change, remarks and documents. So change mein kya aayega? Name of the nature of the change. Delete trustees, A, B, C, D. Charo ko delete kiya. Abhi wo kya bolenge ki sir, hum char hi hai. Aur koi ID nahi ho raha hai, to kaise kare? To unka hi order change karo. जो आपके ट्रस्ट डीड में मैनेजिंग ट्रस्टी था उसको पांच नंबर का ट्रस्टी बना दो और जो मैनेजिंग ट्रस्टी के नीचे वाला ट्रस्टी था उसको मैनेजिंग ट्रस्टी बना दो सो so, वैसा आप क्रोनोलॉजिकल सीक्वेंस चेंज करते हुए चेंज रिपोर्ट फाइल कर दोगे रीजन में एज पर क्लॉज सो एंड सो ऑफ द ट्रस्ट डीड विच इज योर टर्म ऑफ द ट्रस्टीज एंड देन डॉक्यूमेंट्स में आएगा आपका नोटिस नोटिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट just like a meeting of the cooperative societies you have to give a notice you have attendance you have resolution these are the three main things then comes your identity proofs your affidavits and your final affidavit wo sab dal diya submit kar diya 100 rupaye ka court fee label laga diya aur resigning trustee ka hamesha ek affidavit lena hai in order to save your time what happens when you take an affidavit of a resigning trustee that I am resigning for so and so reason Uska resignation letter to rahega aur baad mein aap affidavit bhi karwa ke le loge ki sir affidavit de do affidavit dene se kya hota hai ki aapka jo notice nikalta hai at the time of hearing to the resigning trustee to verify whether this is the exact reason why he is verifying or whether he is resigning or not resigning wo aapka bach jata hai time so once you have got the affidavit of all the resigning trustees you have attached it to your schedule 3 you are done you submit it and then once you are submitted the documents you are given a date for hearing 
now schedule 3 also unlike schedule 2 needs to be notarized or it needs to be affirmed before the judicial clerk schedule 3 may there needs to be a reporting trustee who is a reporting trustee any trustee who is making a representation before the office of the charity commissioner to bring on record the change is a reporting trustee so now keep in mind as i stated in the trust deed you need we keep it for 3 years but the managing trustee or any one trustee bees for life the main reason for that is so that he can be a reporting trustee so we add that person who is holding his seat for life as a reporting trustee and we change the others and then we get it affirmed or notarized fix all the documents and give it once it is submitted you are given a date after say a month after a month it's kept for hearing at the hearing you bring it to the notice of the court that your honor has submitted for change the tenure is 3 years after 3 years i have approached this honorable court for bringing the change on record of the office i have i have i have annexed their affidavit i have annexed the resolution i have annexed the notice i have annexed the attendance all the documents have been annexed once the court is satisfied that yes all the compliances have been done on the very next day an order will be passed it's that simple the total expense is less than 100 rupees for a change report and less than 300 rupees for a registration of a trust deed obviously excluding the newspaper publication part the legal expenses so now you say that you receive a matter say sir divorce lena hai ha aa jao sir kar dete divorce matter mein aapka court fee kam jata hai lekin time bhi utna hi jata hai aata hai sir मेरे को अरेस्ट हो गया है बेल करवाना है ठीक है कोर्ट फी तो ट्रस्ट से भी कम जाता है लेकिन टाइम उतना ही जाता है ना बेल रिजेक्ट हो गया जाओ सेशंस में सेशन में रिजेक्ट हो गया जाओ हाई कोर्ट में और सिविल मैटर का तो पूछो ही मत सो इन माय प्रोफेशनल एंड पर्सनल ओपिनियन दिस इज द बेस्ट वे टू स्टार्ट योर करियर एज अ एडवोकेट आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक हमूरा बी टैबलेट to giving me the opportunity to explain this to you since not many law graduates and advocates know about this act i've thought it very important to bring it to your notice that we have such an act which is very easy to start with you won't believe it i have registered my trust my own trust when i was a second year law student and hence i know all this without further ado i would like to end this session anish thank you very much uh, first thing i would like to congratulate is apne jo baat kiya hai wo bahut practical level pe baat kiya hai because i have heard speakers talking on this particular law but then they talk lot about sections aur uske baad hum log ko khud ko nahi samajhta hai ki karna kya hai what we have done is we have given practical tips to people who want to do the trust who want to register trust and i am thankful for that because itna practical approach bahut kam bar sunne ko milta hai so thank you very much and this is a small pleasure, token from us to you thank you sir